So today we are going to rewire this entire trailer. Um, the wiring on this trailer from the factory is just subpar. I'm not a real big fan of it. It's going to have issues down the road. It's already had some. So we're going to go from tip to tail and rewire this entire thing. Okay, so I'm going to go over kind of what I'm going to use to rewire this trailer. Now keep in mind, I am completely wiring this overkill. You don't need to do it the way I'm doing it in order to get your trailer down the road. The way I'm doing it, I'm just doing it so that I don't have any issues later on. This is all wrong. How dare you? Um, I'm planning on selling this trailer soon. It's a really nice trailer, but the wiring shot on it. So I want to do it the right way. I'm gonna, Like I said, I'm going to do it overkill so you guys don't have to do it this way. But I want to kind of go over what I'm going to use. And I'll do it right now. I'll show you everything we're going to do. So starting off, we're going to be using a couple of these. These are junction boxes. I've got this one opened up here. As you can see, it's all labeled what's going to be going on inside this box. I went ahead and took their tag that they uh, they provide with this in case you don't know what any of this stuff is. It is printed on the bottom of these lugs, but once you put wires on there, all you see is the colors. You don't actually know what they say. So I went ahead and laminated that, actually just taped it, threw that in the bottom there. So if they are trying to figure out what color is what, they can just pull that out and say, hey, you know, my turn signal's out on the right side. So the nice thing about these that I find, um, it's a great spot to make your connections. Also troubleshooting. So if I put one in the front and one in the back, I can go to one or the other and see if I got power throughout or if there's, there's a cut in between, that kind of thing. So it makes troubleshooting real easy. The other thing is it's real easy to connect. So if I want to add some running lights to the thing, I could just run it right off this lug. You know, I don't have to cut and splice the wire mid loom or anything like that and cause issues down the road. So any splices, I'm going to try and use these because I've got a couple of them. They're fairly inexpensive. They're like 15 bucks. Well, for $15, I mean, you just can't, you can't beat that. They come with these nice rubber grommets. They keep everything sealed up inside. Um, they keep bugs, stuff like that out. So real cheap insurance. And like I said, real easy way to cut, splice, add anything you want to in the future. And troubleshooting. Troubleshooting is a big one. So I did buy a brand new seven pin connector that plugs into the truck with the nice cord on it. It's not here yet, so we'll get to that later in the video. You'll see me install that. We're gonna have one of these at the front of the trailer, probably one at the back to do the tail lights and everything else, reverse lights, that kind of thing. But at the front, your plug-in from your truck is gonna come into this box. From there, it's gonna distribute out. I bought this brand new cable that's gonna run the whole length of the trailer to feed the box in the back. On the secondary box in the back that I'm gonna put on, I got this wire here. This only has four wires in it. That's going to run my brake lights and my turn signals and probably auxiliary lights, probably going to be like a reverse light kind of thing. So I don't need to have all seven wires in that loom. I've got this here. Then when it comes to running lights, it's only a two wire system. You'll ground the light itself and then you got a positive and a neutral or negative or ground or whatever you want to call it. So I got this nice wire here. It's very high coated stuff so it's not going to rub it's not going to get water in it it's not going to corrode that kind of thing 50 feet of it was like 20 bucks it's a 25 foot trailer so i got one run down each side so this is real cheap inexpensive stuff but it's going to cause absolutely no headaches down the road so that's what i'm kind of going for so i use this wire here and keep in mind i'll put a link in the description for all the stuff i bought here so if you guys want to do that you can for the running lights i've got these lights here these are silicone sealed they have heat shrink on them they're a super simple design. They're nice and bright. They're nice and small. They're great for running lights because you got rub rails. They kind of tuck up underneath the rub rails so they get protected by the rub rails. So if you ever hit a guardrail, uh, equipment driving next to it or, you know, a stop sign or anything like that, you know, stuff trailers bump into stuff, these are protected. And a lot of times when you do hit stuff, they'll actually push themselves in through the grommet. So they are really nice. They're really inexpensive. You can get them in all kinds of different colors. You can get them clear that show different colors through the clear. Um, I went with these here, like I said, pretty cheap and uh, they work great. Now to connect those lights, I kind of couldn't really figure out how I wanted to do it. And then I came across these. These are actually for landscape lighting. But what I found is they're watertight. They're sealed up. They got a spot where you can put a zip tie on there to hold them up. They're rugged. They got a way to connect three wires. So you have your positive, your neutral, and your ground. Neutral and ground, obviously, pretty much the same thing. I can fit this wire here through this. Tighten down the connector, I can run one end to the light that I'm connecting to, and I can run the rest of the harness down to the next lights. So it's going to be a super nice connection. Look at that. That's going to be that's going to be super nice. So that's going to cause no issues. So that's the reason I got these. Again, a lot of this stuff's really not that expensive. 
moving on to tail lights these are just some simple you know pretty standard tail lights we we're going to replace all the lighting on this thing like i said so i went ahead and picked up four of these because that's how many hole slots are on the back so while i'm at it we're going to go ahead and change those out while i'm back there we're going to put a license plate light on here this is an led one it does have the metal shroud because the back of the trailer is probably the heaviestly abused when it comes to loading unloading backing up that kind of thing so i'm going to try and tuck this up under something that's going to protect it but then again, it's going to give that nice shine down to the license plate. Um, again, we don't want DOT pulling us over for anything stupid. So again, I'm going a little overkill on wiring this trailer, but I thought you guys enjoy seeing it and uh, maybe it gives you some ideas on how to do your own. Next up, one thing that I found, especially living in the Midwest, is it gets dark early, right? Well, a lot of times you're leaving a job site, you're trying to load up equipment, that kind of thing. It's really nice to have auxiliary lights. The other thing it's really nice to have auxiliary lights for is backing up. So you can actually wire these in to an auxiliary port, which is actually this yellow one here. And anytime you put the truck in reverse, it'll actually kick these on. Now this light here where I'm going to mount it, I don't actually want this light to come on whenever I put it in reverse. My, mainly because, you know, I don't want to be blinding anybody behind me in a parking lot, that kind of thing. Um, so I'm actually going to put a switch in between that. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me two options. One, I can have it where I put it in reverse. This will come on. You know, I'm up out in the field or something like that. It's not going to bother anybody. And the other thing is, if I'm working, I'm trying to load the trailer. I don't want to have to go put the truck in reverse, obviously. So if I put a switch on there where I can kick it on, I'll have auxiliary lights so it'll actually shine on. Not only when it's in reverse, but whenever I'm working around the trailer. So that's something I want to do with that. And while we're talking about that, I have these two little spotlights. Again, that's all overkill. But we're going to angle these at the front of the trailer pointing backwards. So when you're backing up, anybody that has a large trailer knows when you're backing up. The key to trailer is not only bumping into things, but you got to watch your tires. you got to make sure they're not driving off into culverts. you got to make sure they're not driving over stuff that's going to flatten them. That kind of thing. Having these kick out both sides running down the trailer, I was going to put them on the back, but then you just see what's behind you. If I put them on each side and kind of angle them out, what it's going to do is it's going to give me a view on each side of the trailer, as well as the wheels, that kind of thing, and behind it. So these are real cheap. Um, they're waterproof. They're kind of a rugged design for like UTVs and stuff like that. So they're going to work great. I'm going to put them up under where they don't get smashed out. When it comes to connections, I went ahead and got one of these. Now I had one in the past. It was a little bit cheaper one. So I went with a little uh, more expensive one. Again, not that expensive, but as much as I use it, I'm pretty pumped about getting this one. So what these are, these are called feral connections. And basically the way they work, you take wire. So it's a termination, right? You take all your wire and you shove it in there like that. And then you crimp it. And I don't want to waste them because I only got so many. But when you crimp it, it actually makes a square. You take that crimped in, which I can even solder. I can, I'll can, i probably even put a little solder in there to make sure it's got a nice connection on that crimp. But that's going to do a really nice connection in itself. But once I have that, I can unscrew that port there. I can slide that ferrule in there and then tighten it down. And what that's going to do is going to create a nice connection. So any vibration, that kind of stuff, it's going to have a nice solid connection. The problem with not using one of those is when you just use wire, when you just twist wire in, you shove it in there and you tighten it down. Over time, as that wire flexes and everything, strands might break. It might not have been tight enough the first time. But having that ferrule in there, it's going to be a nice firm connection. It's not, The wire is already compressed as much as it can, so you can get it tight the first time. And it should cut down on any issues later on down the road. That's kind of what the goal here is. So one final thing, which is uh, very important to me, is a breakaway system. Now, I have been in a situation where the trailer has disconnected from the truck. Oh my God. I am never gonna financially recover from this. Um, it didn't end in tragedy or anything like that, but it was a very uh, scary situation. It was all my fault. Uh, not gonna blame anybody or any manufacturer or anything like that. It was a, it was a operator error is what it was. But when it did happen, I did have one of these. Now that did stop the trailer and it did save my boat. So for as much as they are, I think they're 50 bucks, something like that. Um, I could be wrong. Cheap insurance. Basically the way this works, it's got a battery in there. Um, if this thing ever, it has a pull cord. If that pull cord ends up coming out, it locks the trailer brakes up using the battery power and it creates a braking power to stop the trailer from running off the road, killing somebody, going into a house, that kind of thing. So that's basically everything that I needed to wire this trailer, hopefully. Uh, I'm sure there's a few things here and there I might have forgot. But uh, other than the seven pin flat connector wiring harness that I'm waiting that plugs into the truck, we're ready to wire this thing. So uh, we'll go out there, we'll get everything ripped up, 
torn down. It's already got tubing, ran down the trailer, which is awesome. Um, a lot of manufacturers don't do that, but I wish they did. So that's good to go. So we're going to go ahead and gut that trailer wire, and we'll start installing the new one. So let's go ahead and do it. All right. So let's start dissecting this a little bit. So right here, that's the pipe that runs all the way down that has all the existing wire in it. And as you can see, look at these. These are the worst invention ever. So we're going to cut all these off and then I'm going to tape a couple of them to the new wire and then pull that way and pull our new wire in as we pull our old one out. So let's do that. No turning back now. Funny thing was, this was all working. <laughs> Looks like they grounded with a pop rivet there. I don't hate it. I don't hate that idea. But as you can see, I could break it off if I really needed to. All right, so we just pulled this wire in, right? It's a nice coated wire. This is what the factory used, and it worked for a while, but here's what I'm talking about. Here's an issue that I didn't even know I had until I started pulling wire out. See the black wire, the power wire? See the exposed strands? Cut right through itself, so. All right, so Amazon coming in clutch with the same day shipping. I just ordered this actually at 10.30 this morning. It's four o'clock in the afternoon, and it's here. It's got a pre-terminated, end on it seven pin connector it comes with this sweet cap it's hard to do with one hand it comes with a sweet cap with a lanyard on it so when you're all done the trailer's not being used to put it back on you can see there it's got good contacts in it uh, these are a couple plugs for the side ports that i'm going to be using um, it already comes pre-done i'm going to check all these make sure they're tight what i like about this one too is these lugs are a little longer than the other style that i just got so i can actually splice into this one um, and add a little bit more stuff on there than I can on the other ones, which is fine because I'm going to do a lot of it on the front. So that's perfect. Go ahead and get that mounted up there and uh, then we'll just keep going.
the hell is that? There's a kilo of Colombian Bam Bam under the car. All right, so I got the box mounted and I've got all the wire terminations in there as far as the feed goes. Um, we're not gonna be using the black, yellow, and the blue. The blue's a uh, break, obviously. Yellow's gonna be auxiliary and the black's uh, constant power, so don't need any of that. Everything else is for taillights, turn signals, stuff like that, so, and then uh, obviously the neutral ground. Went ahead and ground down a spot here to bond everything to the trailer frame, so we'll do that every time we use one of these boxes. I'll go ahead and bond again, so that'll be a good, uh, good ground spot. Yeah, and then the brakes can come out of here, down in there. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna use one of these T-splices. So I gotta do this 12 times on this trailer. So this is how we're gonna do it. The hardest thing about this whole job is stripping this wire that I got. It's got a really heavy coating on it. Best way to do it I found is to cut it right down the middle like this. Keep in mind, I already take into account that I'm gonna have to probably cut the end of that wire off because I probably hurt it. Take my needle nose, grab the jacket. That's tearing the jacket off without actually hurting the wire itself. Go ahead and cut this jacket away. That's really all the wire I need, so that one's good. Now let's do this one. One thing that always makes the process faster when you're wiring stuff is try and, if you gotta use a different tool every time, try and do as much as you can with that tool every time. So I split all the wiring at once, then I went and I stripped all the wiring at once, and then I'll go through and I'll crimp all the wire at once so you're not grabbing the same tool over and over again. If that makes any sense. All right, now the fun part. Now we're gonna crimp the ferrules on. So. Always give everything a little tug. Ha! Gay! Just to be sure that it's not loose. Now we gotta plug them in. So when I put these in here, just for ease of remembering, I'm gonna put the red wire into the, the red colored one and the black one into the black colored one. So real simple. That way I don't forget. All right, so we got both those wires in there where I want them. Now we're going to take the cap, screw it on, compress the grommet there, and screw on the back side, and that's going to create a watertight connection. The bottom one won't be so watertight because the wires are so small, but not that worried about it. I'll keep it pointed to where that's pointed down, so if anything gets in there, it does come back out. All right, so that's one side. All right, so this light, I'm gonna put it about right here. I want it to be directly under this bar so it's protected at all times. Um, this is usually where I hang my chains and binders. So if I hang it on the back part of the flange, it shouldn't get into it, especially since it's tied up on there. And I never had enough that actually covered the whole thing. I'm only just covered probably about from here there, so. I was gonna mount it under here but the more I thought about it, the more I don't want my chains getting into it and kind of tearing it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it here. Um, I'm putting some brackets underneath here, as you can see, to kind of kick it back off that bar. So if something does run into this thing, at least this is tucked in there a little bit. Um, the other thing is if I put it back there on that back bar, it kind of really 
tucks it in there and it kind of gets in the way. It's going to deflect a lot of light off this stuff. So I wanted it farther back on the trailer so it really helps out. So it's going to look something like this. But I'm going to weld those tabs on there to kind of hold it up underneath there. So this should work a lot better and uh, I think I'm going to be happy with it. So let's go ahead and weld it on there. Alright, so I'm going to put these pod lights about in this area here. Like I said, I'm going to angle them just a little bit down so when they look, they put a little light where you can see that tire, but they also shine back behind the trailer. So if you're turning this way, you can kind of see where you're going. Same on the other side. So like I said, we're going to put two of them right here, one on each side. Got the other one mounted up. It's gonna light this area. Those are gonna be so sick. I cannot wait to get this thing all done and try it out. All right, guys, here's a little update for you. Um, I didn't do a lot of video in, on wiring this, just kind of cl uh, close quarters and kind of hard to get all this on tape. But anyways, um, this is kind of what I got going on. This entire box here is all for the light bar and the two pods. Basically, um, I wanted to have a relay on that so it's not putting a lot of load on the truck and the wiring. So. Went ahead and put a relay on, and I added a switch on the outside of this, drilled a hole, and put this uh, blank on. So before I closed all this up, I wanted to kind of show you guys what I had going on in here. Um, but this just kind of rolls up, tucks in there. It's got plenty of room in there. It's not going to get too hot. And these lights aren't going to be on that long anyways. So I'll put that on there, and then we'll bolt that on, and then I'll paint all this black and label what it is. But got that going. Um, pretty much got all this stuff ready to go. The only other thing I got to do is add the trailer brake breakaway system, um, which I'll just have to tap into that one. So I'll run more wire. And then after that, um, this thing's all ready to seal up. I'll go ahead and grease everything so it doesn't rust and that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll put the cover on and uh, then we'll just tidy up some wires and, you know, kind of get that stuff on there anywhere I'm worried about it rubbing and whatnot. So, but it's coming along. I'm getting ready to heat shrink the very last connection on this entire trailer. Um, it's been a long time coming. A lot of work went into all this. I mean, obviously these gold ones, that's the, the pre-terminated harness that I bought for the plug-in of the trailer. But this is the last one. And I just want to highlight how I've been doing all these connections for you guys if you missed it. So I've been using these Dorman Professional Series connectors. Um, these are a crimp style connector. So what you do, you slide your heat shrink on. You crimp this on nice and tight. And I can show you on the bottom side here how the crimp. See how it really bit down in the middle there. It's rounded on the top, but it really smashed it in the middle to where you wire can't come out and that is a good connection like that's a very solid connection and then if you put the heat shrink on top of that that's a very good connection that's probably not going to have any problems but since i went a little over top for this video i went ahead and 
soldered everything on top of that. Now, keep in mind, this isn't gonna get super hot, so the solder's gonna be just fine. Um, as you can see, though, I'll try and get real close to it. That has completely encapsulated the whole thing. It's basically welded it to the connector. Um, I could have soldered this on here without crimping it, and it would have held just fine also. But I just went ahead and double did it, like I said, and this is gonna be like your finished product when it's all said and done. Super nice. I mean, it's super clean. It's gonna be problem free. So I'm pretty pumped that I did it this way. Um, whoever gets this trailer after me, if I do sell it, um, they're gonna be set. So the whole switch box and everything's ready to go. I got some screws, some temporary drywall screws in there for right now because the ones I had are too short because I had to double these things up. So um, we'll get some screws for that and then we'll get that thing all painted up where it looks nice. I'm pretty pumped on how that turned out too. So, but like I said, that's it on this wiring of the trailer. The first thing we got to do is uh, we got to tidy all this stuff up. I want to zip tie everything up so it's not hanging down and then uh, put that spiral wrap on there to protect anything on these rough edges and stuff. So, but that's it. All right, this trailer's done. It's 100% rewired the exact way I'd want it to be from the factory. Got it all tidied up. Um, everything's working. I did back the truck over here and test everything um everything is working like i said got everything tidied up light bar comes on all that cool stuff went ahead and greased the jack so that's good to go tried it up and down it does work um uh tonight i'll go ahead and hook the truck up to it and then we'll uh we'll do a walk around show you all the lights show you the light bar and the uh the backup lights there they're pretty cool i'm pretty excited about that even the third brake light works so got that wired up right but that's going to do it for this video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope it kind of gives you guys some ideas. If you have some trailers of your own that you're looking at restoring, it's really not that hard. It did take a lot of time. I probably had oof, probably 25, 30 hours in it, but I was doing it myself and I was taking my time. So it's correct. Um, it's the way, exactly the way it should be. So pretty happy with it. Um, now I'm kind of torn. I was going to get it going again, get it right and get it on the, uh, the old marketplace and see if I could get some money for it but i've kind of found a newfound love for it um it's going to meet my needs again so i might keep it so you might still see it on the channel you might not i haven't decided yet so let me know down in the comments you think i should keep it or should i just get rid of it so i can obviously get double what i paid for it because of the market these days but then again then i gotta buy a new one so all right so i came back out here at night about nine o'clock night um got the truck backed up here got it plugged in I want to go ahead and uh, fire this trailer up at night. Um, I'm real excited. I want to see the light bar and the pods in action when I put this thing on in reverse. I want to see the reverse lights. I want to see the running lights. I want to see all that stuff. Just see how big of a difference the LEDs make. And I'm just excited because, uh, you know, I've never really had a trailer with any kind of backup lighting on it. And uh, I'm going to get the light turned off here. So bear with me. All right, so as you can see, it's pitch black. Got a little bit of light over there, but it's pitch black out. So the trailer is powered up. Let's go ahead and do a shot of the running lights with the LEDs. I really love these LEDs, man. They're a perfect amount of bright. They're like bright where they are, but they don't like light up the entire area. You know what I mean? Let's go ahead and look at the back. As you can see, I did go ahead and put an LED license plate light on there, so that's nice. I've also got the uh, LED light bar at the bottom there with the three lights. Really like that. Yeah, that looks good. Everything's working, so that's good. I didn't have any doubt, but everything's working. So let's go ahead and turn the backup lights on. So the switch is up here. I got a feel for it because I painted everything black. There it is. Here we go. Oh, man. That's awesome. Go ahead, stand back and look at it for you. So that is with the switch on. So when you go to back the truck up, the idea is you want to back it up. You go ahead, hop out, throw the switch on, throws a bunch of light behind you. I was going to hook it up to where it came on every time you put the truck in reverse, but what I didn't want to happen is, you know, I'd be at the uh, Home Depot or something like that, or leaving one of the kids' <laughs> soccer games or something, and still have the trailer on the truck, and I didn't want to put it in reverse and just absolutely blind everybody behind me. So I went ahead and put it on a switch. I thought that'd be a better idea. The nice thing, the reason I went with the pod lights instead of just the light bar See how I can see the wheels there? That's really big. You know, say I was going to back it around this uh, the spigot here. Having the pod light, I can see the spigot. I can hug those tires right with it. If I didn't have those pod lights, if I go ahead and close it, see how I can't see it? Now I can. Can't see it. Now I can. That's the big reason behind that. The other reason. 
say we're loading hay on the side of this thing well you got the skid steer say the skid steer doesn't have real good lighting the lighting's on top of the skid steer you start getting close to the wheels or whatnot you can't tell whether you're going to get close to that and you don't want to knock it off the beat or anything like that with the machine well having that light there i can see the deck and i can also see the wheels so i'm not going to worry about crashing in the side of this thing so that was kind of the reason i wanted to put those lights on that light bar and i also got this light bar traction supply and it was on like a super sale i got it for like 30 bucks it retailed for like 80 so so i'm pretty pumped about that um the last thing i want to do i'll start the truck up and we're going to put it in reverse and i want to see the reverse lights so the way i got this thing set up every time you put the truck in reverse it's got more lights that's come on so all right with the truck in reverse as you can see i went ahead and wired that top light bar in not because i needed it but just because it was an option it had an extra wire on it so i figured why not and then see all that light back here so when you're actually backing the trailer up if you don't actually need all that light even though when you put the truck in reverse with the running lights on you can see the red lights and it's got the white for when you put the truck in reverse so that's pretty cool all right so this is the truck with the brake lights on see the truck that's got third brake light on i also went ahead and incorporated the third brake light into the trailer so like i said i had an extra one it was a two-pack when i bought those light bars didn't really need it but anytime you put your foot on the brake, you got a light bar up top, and then obviously the tail lights come on a little brighter. So I thought that was a pretty good idea. So if you're not hauling anything, every time you tap the brake, you got a third brake light up top, just like you would have in a regular vehicle. So we're gonna back her in the shed here, and we're not gonna turn the shed lights on. We're gonna do it with the trailer lights. So let's do it. All right, come back here. I'm gonna flip them on. Oh, look at that. That's so awesome. All right, let's back it up. All right, so let's go over the wiring real quick. We went ahead and did 11 foot cord coming from the truck, got it going up. Don't know how, until I use this trailer a little bit or sell it, I don't know how to permanently attach that just right now. So it's just zip tied for right now. There we go. There's all that. Everything is got the spiral wrap on there to protect it. It's all zip tied up. It's nice and sturdy. Got this wire for the breakaway controller going all the way up front. It's all up out of the way. It's not gonna get ripped up. All that wiring is done, spiral wrapped, all that for the lights. They still work because it's still hooked up to the truck, as you can see, so everything works. It's a nice waterproof switch. Really like that. Spent a little extra cash on that, but totally worth it. Coming down, though, we got this nice plastic sheathing going all the way to where it goes to the main harness. We're running down that nice pipe. Everything spiral wrapped that goes into the pipe. And then underneath the trailer... We've got a box in the middle there that feeds all the brake lines. As you can see, you got everything spiral wrapped in. Use the piping where it was there, run it down the frame rail. So leaving that junction box, we're gonna come on down to the last junction box, the third and final one on the back. As you can see, got the wire all tied up, got the same spiral wrap on there. It's not hanging down below the trailer, so if the trailer hits anything, driveway or anything, any kind of slope when we're backing on, uh, we don't have to worry about it ripping anything off. So that all looks good. Box is nice and grounded. Take a look at our taillight wiring. So as you can see, that looks really nice. Got that all taped up, tucked under there. There's one of those T-splices right there. Those things are awesome. Pod lights. Got that wire all ran. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Um, hope it was a little informational for you. Um, I know it was a big kind of learning experience for me, um, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I went through the whole process. It took me about 20, 30 hours to do the whole thing. I'm not going to lie. Um, a lot of nights out here wrenching on this thing, you know, splicing, cutting, soldering, heat shrinking, all that good stuff. So, but I had fun with it. I learned a lot. Um, I learned the ways that I should and shouldn't do things. And uh, I learned the ways that manufacturers probably shouldn't do things. So 
it was a very eye-opening experience for me and i hope it was for you guys too so but uh anyways uh don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more we're gonna keep doing stuff like this on the channel so hope you liked it and uh we'll see you later